Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Tech Check. We continue moving along with some really cool and interesting stories from the Pakistan tech ecosystem. And today we have with us Mr. Alino Mani from a company called Outclass. Ali, welcome to Tech Check. Thank you, Ji. Assalamu alaikum. And uh, thank you for tuning in, viewers. It's nice to be here. Wa alaikum salam. And as you've seen, maybe, Ali, during some of our other episodes, we don't waste time. We jump right in. So tell us a little bit about you and tell us a little bit about Outclass. Thank you. So um, I am uh, I'm from Lahore, Pakistan. Um, I, I went to school here um, and uh, very soon after my schooling, my family moved to the US. Uh, I was uh, for for the first two years in Houston where Farooq Saab is and we know some people in common. Uh, and then sort of my journey took me uh, around uh, um, the US and then back to Pakistan. I was at Austin when I came back to Karachi to take care of a, a, a relative. Um, but then ended up staying for four years uh, and I dropped out of college, um, five years actually, and I uh, started working at a school. I love teaching. Um, I've been teaching since I was in my O-levels myself. That's when I taught my first class of English. And, uh, and, okay. and so um, those four years, five years in Karachi uh, saw me going back and forth between Karachi and Houston and setting up Pakistan's first full inclusion special education program uh, in at the CAS school. Um, and so this is stuff that we had learned at the Monarch School, which is uh, in Houston. It's one of the best uh, schools for autism in, in um, the US. So I worked there for two years, um, went back to Karachi, set that program up. Um, and then uh, got married in Karachi. And in 2012, I went back to, uh, to the US, um, had to finish my college degree. Um, and then I went to Harvard in where um, I attended the school leadership program and uh, the urban scholars program. Um, I am the only Pakistani to have done either of those programs um, at Harvard. Um, and then I took on the position of um, principal of the High School of Community Charter School of Cambridge, uh, which uh, is a low income, 97% uh, students of color, 80% um, below the poverty line school. Um, and in four years, mashallah, we had really good results where I got or we got kids of um, you know, parking lot attendant, single mother, all mostly immigrants into places like Harvard, MIT, Stanford, um, and so on and so forth. Um, and my last year, we were ranked the number one school uh, for low income students in Massachusetts, which is which gives us great pride because that's where the best schools, best charter schools in, in the country are located. Uh, sim simultaneously, I've always taught uh, I've also taught at um, Harvard, MIT, and Boston College's schools of education, uh, where I trained teachers who were in service or at the Harvard Teachers Fellows Program, and then mostly focused on uh, leadership development for equity in education. Um, and then sort of came back to Pakistan uh, after about 15 years in the US, um, and have uh, worked with Sayyid Babar Ali for a year, uh, sort of streamlining their foundation's work. Uh, with LUMS, with Aitchison College, and 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 school improvement in in some uh, across Pakistan, and now over the last uh, seven eight months uh, into the pandemic, uh, with my son being born in the middle of the pandemic, I wanted to do something uh, that had a bigger impact um, and put Pakistan's sort of intellectual power on the map for the world to see, uh, and so right. we've uh, started Outclass. Uh, with two partners, uh, myself, Eamon Bashir, who was formerly, who's from LUMS, and uh, she was uh, formerly at the World Bank, Nestle, and Coca-Cola, and, and uh, also was a teacher for a year, but would say that in my corporate career, I would always reflect back on, on my time in teaching and love that the most. And so she's, a, she's the CEO of our company, and uh, then I'm joined, uh, uh, we're joined by Usman Bashir, uh, Osman was with me at HSN. He was the head boy. Then he went to Yale and uh, Harvard Business School. Um, and he works in uh, sort of uh, uh, fintech investments. Uh, he leads an investment arm for fintech in Europe for Fidelity. And he's based out of London, but he spends a lot of his time here um, working on Outclass with us. Awesome. So that's the team. So tell, us, so tell us a little bit about Outclass. What are you doing? 
So um, Outclass aims to uh, achieve a few things. One, we want uh, to democratize access to a high quality education for all Pakistanis. Uh, and then we want to also um, uh, you show high quality Pakistani teachers as teaching students across the world. Uh, and so for this, what we've done is we've partnered with some of the best Pakistani qualified uh, around the world. Um, and that's, you know, because we have a powerful sort of academic at least network that allows uh, us to bring people on board who've been with us at Harvard, MIT, Stanford, Yale, uh, for example, London School of Economics, Oxford. That's where some of our teachers have come from. And in, in sort of delivering that firepower uh, you know, it's not possible to bring those people on with any amounts of money. They're career people who are doing amazing things out there in the world. And so we've got them aligned on our mission. And we want every single teacher who's on Outclass to be an inspiration for every single student who sits in front of a screen and reads for them. So that's one thing. We want to create, uh, we, we uh, disagree with this argument that uh, kids don't deserve high quality content or that content is already out there. We feel uh, that investing in content, which is culturally and socially and contextually appropriate is what is going to drive the needle if you want critically thinking students. If you want students who just going to ace exams, I think then just giving them a lot of MCQs with these name brand teachers who've cracked the code on how to take the exam, like that's the way you would go. But Outclass has tried to steer away from that. And um, what, we, what we instead hope to focus on is to engage students in the same way that video games and, and cartoons and other such things, TV shows engage students. Um, and, uh, and, and whether they're learning actively or passively, they're absorbing content in a way that is gonna stay with them beyond just that exam. And so I think that if you go to Outclass, which I really uh, uh, hope you will, I know you've done some, spent some time on it, our experience sort of mirrors more the Netflix experience rather than some online teaching or Zoom experience. That's brilliant, that's brilliant. So the, the next question is, and, and you know, again, this is a wonderful pursuit. And, you know, and we, I, I would fully concur with you that we have an amazing intellectual capacity that we just have. So it's great that you're looking at different ways to do that. How do you sustain this uh, from a revenue perspective, right? Yes. Yeah, so, so. yeah, yeah. So I think we 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 never shied away from the fact that we are a business. We have sort of some uh, Robin Hood models built in that uh, uh, you know we we hopefully we are at the same uh, rate uh, for the international market at the at this time. But there's some differentiation we can do there. Um, but you know we we are reevaluating our monetization model because we want to be truly disruptive. And you know initially we started out as a very premium sort of high and inaccessible product. And we've and you know we're small, nimble, and and we think together. We're fast uh, and we're agile. And so we're redoing the whole thing um, in terms of how students pay and what their sort of interaction with us is. And we're going to a much more affordable and scalable subscription model, inshallah. And we're going to roll that out in the month of April. So that. That's, that's one thing. I think that um, the other thing then is, you know, understanding how we've been founded is very important. Unlike other startups, uh, we are people who had careers in the West. Uh, and, and that means that, you know, we've come back to Pakistan at the age where people come to come back to their country and they bring with them savings that they invest in houses and plots and all of that. We have not done that. So that's the security sure. that's created in, in service of this mission. Um, you know, and, and we invite people from the diaspora to join us uh, and see sort of where uh, where they can support this work because there is a lot. Um, we, we've already feel very lucky, uh, you know, that the park launch folks and others have reached out and, and, and given us a lot of support. And we have we, we have specific asks as well that that uh, uh, we invite people to to join us with and support us with. Awesome. And what are some of those asks? Yeah, so I think um, the one thing that I didn't say before, um, it, another one of our missions in Pakistan is to move the uh, quality of education forward. For that, we see four main levers. Um, the first is to make mathematics free across Pakistan. Um, I think the okay. I think mathematics is the future of uh, all careers, whether it's computing, artificial intelligence, or anything sort of that's going to lead the way for human thinkings. I think the next step up from that, and we've already done that, 
um, we have a we have a world topper uh, mathematician who has a BSc degree from Yale and a math degree, you know, MBA from Harvard, who agreed to teach this course and make it free for whoever wants it. And that sort of fourth grade all the way through eleventh grade and some advanced math there. And we we you know we've have about a thousand students already studying that one course, and we are just getting started. We're two and a half months in. And so we hope that hundreds of thousands and then millions of Pakistani students will one day take that course in many languages. Similarly, uh, you know, we believe that the next step up from that is computer coding. Uh, if you can learn math and coding, I think you become language independent in the economy of the future. And you are able to process information and present it logically in a way that currently uh, Pakistani students really struggle to do. So you want to build math, coding, English language access, and then eventually Mandarin speaking fluency, because, uh, it, you know, I think that uh, for the long term future of Pakistan, you know, some sort of varied alignment with both English and Mandarin uh, could really help our students uh, and our, our youth, both sort of economically as well as socially and with social mobility in the world that's coming towards them. So I think for the diaspora, it, with, with these four having these four aims um, the second one is one uh, with with the computer coding language i believe that uh, we have many people in your network, in our network, or in other sort of networks who just haven't found a platform to come. And if there is someone uh, who's really keen to, to partner with us on this mission to drive coding to every single child in Pakistan with the hope that uh, if we can teach two to four crore children coding at some point, then maybe in five to 10 years, we'll have a Bill Gates or uh, an Elon Musk coming out of Pakistan. And a couple of those, I mean, we're talking about crores uh, on the in influx side. And we believe uh, firmly that a couple of those can really change the trajectory for Pakistan. So that's where we're looking for help. Somebody wants to take this project for coding um, and, you know, like do it really high quality, like Harvard, Stanford, MIT quality uh, and partner with us and do it nationwide and, and, and We'll provide all the infrastructure and marketing and other support for it, inshallah. Fantastic. Well, it's great to hear your story, uh, uh, Ali. And I'm, I'm, I'm very, in some ways, very envious of the passion that you exude and, you know, what you left here in the U.S. to go back and pursue that in Pakistan. So kudos to you and the many others, as we term them, Pakistanis who are going back to do good things. And, and with that, we've come to the end of our time. I wanted to thank you, Ali, very much for coming on the show. Really appreciate that. And to thank our audience out there, as you can see, we've, we keep going. You know, we've gone past 60 episodes, and I just continue to discover wonderful companies and people like Ali and Outclass. Please send us your suggestions. We're always looking for those. Also, like, share, and subscribe. That's what keeps us going here. And with that, I bid all of you, Allah Hafiz. Thank you.